Hey y'all, so before I get this video started, let me give a quick shout out. These were the first three comments in my last video. If you want to be featured in my next video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and come show me some love when I drop a new video. What's up you guys, it's Kim Ravon, AKA Coach Key, coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. So as you guys can tell by the title of this video, in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about how much money I got back for a tax refund this year and how I decided to spend it. Now, if you are not familiar with my channel, over a year ago, I did make a video about why the average person does not want a tax refund. If you missed that video, I'll link it up in the eye in the sky. Before I give you the details about my tax refund, how I spent it, all of that, I first want to explain to you guys why I got a tax refund in the first place. First of all, when I first got into the workforce, I was a realtor. And so as a realtor, you get paid on a 1099, you are an independent contractor. Their taxes work a lot different and anybody who's an independent contractor or have a home-based business or have a business, the taxes work a lot different than when you you are an employee in corporate America. So when you are an employee, things look a little bit like this. You get paid or you have your paycheck, they tax it first, and then there's your paycheck, your net amount that you take home. When somebody has a business or they're an independent contractor, what happens is the income comes in, at the end of the year, they have a bunch of tax deductions that they're able to write off that lowers their tax liability. Whatever's left over at the end is actually the amount that they're taxed on, okay? So after I got out of real estate and I got into corporate America as a full-time nurse, I believe that I started like in April or May of the particular year that I started as a nurse, I was getting listen, $1,200 taken out of my check every month for taxes. At the end of that first year, I believe I had earned like over $30,000 in that time frame, And I still, even after being taxed $1,200 a month, I still had a tax bill at the end of the year. At that time, my tax professional had asked me, do you have some kind of business, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking to myself, no. But then eventually I, re I remembered and I realized, oh, I do have this home-based business that I attempted to start. It was in the network marketing arena. And I was like, but I haven't earned money yet. And he was like, no, it's fine that you haven't earned money yet. I thought you had to earn money to basically be able to take advantage of the tax deductions. And that was not true. So he started to put different tax deductions in like my cell phone bill, just different things that I had that was associated with business. And because of that, I ended up getting a tax refund. And let me tell you, after that year, I did not see a tax refund again until last year. And my first year of getting a tax refund, I believe was associated with my 2012 taxes, if I'm not mistaken. So in 2013, I decided to walk away from nursing. I got into entrepreneurship. I was in different network marketing companies from 2013 up into like a couple of years ago. And during that time frame, because I was full time in entrepreneurship and I did not have a regular job in anymore. Now all of the income I had coming in at the time was not taxed until the end of the year. Well, me being a young person, I was not doing my due diligence of making sure that I was saving a certain percentage of my taxes or of my checks for taxes at the end of the year. So at one point I remember getting a huge tax bill and I, I think at one time I was over $40,000. When I had my highest debt amount, I was over $40,000 in debt and I had over $800 a month in debt bills. And one of those debts was a tax debt. I think it was two actually, and it accumulated to being over $3,000. Once I got serious about my debt elimination journey and my debt freedom journey and I started paying things off, the one thing that I told myself was, I want to get to the point that and where no matter what my tax bill is at the end of the year, I have the money in a specific account to be able to pay it. So at some point, I don't remember what year, but at some point I started to just save money, you know, just in one account. And then eventually I did start splitting it off. So I have seven different savings accounts with my personal, and then I do have a tax savings account with my business account as well. And so one of my seven different savings accounts on personal is a tax account. Too. That's where I first started to save money for taxes before I started developing LLCs and stuff like that. So at this point, 
I eventually got back into nursing like four and a half years ago. I had decided that, you know what? Even though I love entrepreneurship, the way that I'm going about it is not something that works well with my personality long term. So even though I was still promoting the businesses in different ways, like having the links in my YouTube and just different things like that at the time, I was not really getting as much of a return because I was not as involved as I used to be. At one point, I was in the top 0.1% of multiple companies. I helped start a company. I was on the founding board. There was a lot that was going on. So once I got back into the workforce, one of the things that I realized was I could actually help myself in the tax area of my life by overtaxing myself on my job income. Your job income is always going to be taxed higher than any business and any investments that you have. Okay. That's just what it is. That is the tax code. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to put zero, zero or one allowances on my W-9 so that I am overtaxing my job. That way, once I do my taxes at the end of the year and I accumulate all my different business receipts and stuff like that, because I'm overtaxed here, I'm not taxed on my business income until the end of the year. Hopefully by the end of the year when I do my taxes, it kind of marries in the middle somewhere. So last year was actually the first year where I got a tax refund because when I first got back into the workforce, I wasn't working very many hours. It would be really spotty. So the majority of my income at that time came from my businesses. But then eventually as I started to get raises, I started to work through an agency. At one point I worked doing travel nursing, which you make a lot of money doing. Then that income started to overtake my business income at a certain point. So even if it never overtook it, I still was helping myself because I was overtaxing myself here, which would allow me to help myself on the other side. So when I did my 2019 taxes, I was very surprised that I got a tax refund at all. I was like, did you call the right person? And this person I've been going to for years. I'm like, are you sure? Did you, <laughs> did you make a mistake? And so this year he was like, oh, you're getting a tax refund again. And this one's a big one. And I'm like, huh? But I did have a lot of business deductions last year. I bought computers for my business. There was a lot that was going on. I, you know, invested in education and different things like that. So there was a lot that I did. So my tax refund this year was over $5,300. And of course the first thing that you have to do when it comes to that is paying your tax preparer. So I had over $700 worth of like expenses when it came to the tax preparer. So after all of those fees, what actually hit my account between the state and the federal was $4,695.59. So how I decided to spend my money was this. The first thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to increase my true emergency fund. I have two different emergency funds out of my seven accounts. Two of them are emergency funds. And so with my mini emergency fund, I decided I wanted that to be $3,000 because $1,000 is not nearly enough. And then everybody knows that your true emergency fund is supposed to be six worth six months worth of expenses. So at the time that I started these different sinking funds and I started the emergency funds at the time, because my expenses were so low and they still are, to be honest with you, I decided that I wanted my true emergency fund to be $9,000. But because I'm getting up in age and because I do eventually want to have children and different things like that, I will eventually move back out, which I am not interested in in any way, shape or form anytime soon because it is a waste of money. Okay big waste of money. I decided that I wanted to increase my true emergency fund to $12,000. So out of the $46,95.59, I put $2,320.68 in my true emergency fund. That got my true emergency fund to $12,000 even. So I made sure that I did all my calculations after I got paid my interest on those savings accounts. So next I decided to top off my car sinking fund. And so at the time, I don't remember how much I had in there, but I wanted to get that to $10,000. So I decided to put $187 and 45 cents in that fund. So I was pretty close to $10,000 anyway. And I don't really know why I chose the number 10,000, I guess, because it's five figures. And that's also a number where like, if something was to happen to my car, which I don't project anything happening to it anytime soon, I take really good care of it and it was only one owner before me and he took really good care of it. I just wanted to make sure that if I needed a new car, I don't have to go 
back into debt. This month will make my three year debt free anniversary and I just have no desire to ever go back in debt unless I absolutely have to. So if I needed to buy another car, I wanted to have enough money in my car account where I could pay cash if needed. So the next thing that I did was I put money into my miscellaneous slash investment sinking fund. This is a sinking fund where I use it for different things. Like when I bought my computers for my business last year, I went ahead and I paid for it out of that. Now, because I am a sole, a sole member, I have a sole member LLC and I have sole proprietorship. Because of that, my personal and my business income kind of mixes up. But because I bought the computer specifically for my day trading and also uh, one of my computers is specifically for YouTube and my YouTube my YouTube is in my personal name and it gets paid to my personal account. Because of that, I was able to spend the money out of my personal income, if that makes sense. So I wanted to get this account to $10,000 as well. So I put $187.46 in this account. And then what ended up happening was I got a really substantial large repayment back from somebody who I loaned money to a couple of years ago. They had not made a payment since like early last year, had not heard from them since then. And all of a sudden they were just like, hey, how much do I owe? And I told them and they ended up sending the full payment right then and there, like less than an hour later. And I was like, what okay <laughs> so that account has more than ten thousand dollars in it but at the time that's how much i took from my tax refund to get it to ten thousand dollars or as close to as possible so at this point i've only accounted for 26.95.59 out of the 46.95.59 so what happened with the other two thousand well because of the pandemic last year, how everything was working at the post office, the lines were extremely long. I mean, you would literally just, it didn't matter what time of day, the line was just all out the door and things like that. And that's what I used to ship planners and, and stuff like that. I decided, you know what, especially with the issue I was having with my planner company, that I was not going to sell planners last year, which meant that my business income took a hit because a good portion of my business income did come from planners. I was not promoting my courses as much as I used to and just different things. And because of that, um, I decided to just take a step back from business. I also had a lot of personal stuff going on in my household. And it was just no way that I can maintain my business the way that I was prior to and have to deal with the stuff that I was dealing with in my household. So recently I decided that I was going to start pushing forward to growing my businesses again because my overall goal has been to kind of eventually become like a one-stop shop for somebody when it came to finance. If you want to learn how to manage your money and save money and get out of debt really quickly while doing all of that, here I have a course for that. Here I have a planner for that. Here I have a workbook for that. If somebody wants to learn different investment strategies, here either I have a course for, for it or I know somebody personally that I can vouch for or I went through a program myself that I can vouch for where here I can suggest this if somebody needs help when it comes to credit I can have a done for you service and I can have a, a do-it-yourself service I want to embody all things finance and so because of that I decided you know what I'm getting to the point where I'm itching in the entrepreneur space again. I love my job, absolute, like I absolutely love my job, but I cannot help people in the way that I want to help them when it comes to finance with my nursing job. I just can't. So 2000 of that refund is actually going to go towards funding my businesses. Um, so I just got a new bank account for my newest LLC. So I will be putting 1500 of the $2,000 refund into that account and then 500 of it will go into my regular LLC business bank account. So that is how I decided to spend my tax refund. So essentially I didn't spend it the way that most people do with, you know, clothes and vacations and TVs and more power to people spend your money how you want to is your money but for me personally I do a lot of that stuff myself throughout the year anyway and I don't miss any money from doing that so I just felt like it was more important for me to fund my dreams and fund my business and also top out my accounts my savings accounts at certain points so that I can meet certain goals that I have set for myself so my next video I'm actually going to be putting out will be talking about how I have just recently hit 
one of my biggest savings goals that I have had like for a very long time and I'm gonna talk to you guys about that because I don't do savings updates anymore on a monthly basis on my channel but I just wanted to come and talk to you guys about the tax refund stuff because I think it's really important to see how different people spend their money differently so if you guys have any questions feel free to leave them down below I hope you guys enjoyed the video please give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already but other than that I'll see you guys in the next video bye guys